So this is what I'll go through today. Um, challenges in controlling high-speed craft with emphasis on high-speed craft in a, as opposed to regular or non-planing craft and traditional conventional cockpits in that manner. Um, objective of designing high-speed cockpits, which goes into a steering bar is just one part of a cockpit, but the whole cockpit needs to, to interact uh, and, in, and be integrated. Um, sensory overload, I will explain, and that is the key issue that we try to mitigate um, with the system. Um, and then I'll show you a picture um, of the system. Um, and again, it's also here so you can try it uh, on water. Um, so with great power and speed comes great responsibility. Um, with that, we want to say that the faster you go, the more difficult it is. And I mean, most of you, I'm sure, have driven boats in 30 knots. And when you go up to 60 knots, it's just, it's not twice as hard, it's 10 times as hard because the human capacity to interpret um, interpret what's going on and navigating, and you saw the presentation before here on boats hitting water, uh, bo boats hitting uh, metal rods in the middle of the night. Um, that happens in daytime as well, just because people cannot um, interpret at those speeds. So slowing down is always a good idea. Um, so keep this in mind. Our idea with this steering system is that it gets better and it gets more necessary the faster you go and the more demanding the conditions are. Of course you can drive a slow boat with a steering wheel, no, no problem, but keep in mind that we're th talking higher speeds here. Um, so again, um, what I said before, shorter reaction times, um, also higher forces, it's not only what you see that increases with speed, it's also what you feel and what affects your body. And in some cases, I'll, I'll show, I'll, I will show you some videos if they run. Um, and in some cases, it doesn't matter how good a driver you are because if you're getting thrown around, your competence is not gonna come to its own um, in that manner. Um, here's a conventional cockpit that doesn't look strange to any of you, but if you ask someone that's never driven a boat to operate this, they will start with asking what the six levers are for. And this is an issue. I mean, for experienced drivers, they do learn this. People can drive boats great with systems like this. But for someone that's new in training, and we talked about volunteer, vo voluntary crews, people that spend eight hours a month in their boats, them and professionals also benefit from reducing um, reducing the number of levers and the number of uh, of knobs in in the system um, so now we're not necessarily talking about just ergonomics but also about the number of options you have and the number of dials you have to operate to do what you want to do with the boat so with this picture he's in no way a professional but what, what you want to see here is that when his body is affected by the motion He's not steering like this because it's better than steering straight. He's steering by, like this because he has no choice. When he's getting slammed, he's giving input both on his throttle and on his wheel. Um, all right. And there is no way, I mean, sure, he could use, uh, I'll show you the next video. Um, of course, when you stand, it's really hard. Anyway, what you will see in um, this, what you, should have seen in this video is that if you're in balance, if you're in a good position in a seat, it helps because it keeps your torso in more or less the same place. You can you can use you can reduce what the guy in uh, outside Miami was doing, but you're still affected uh, by this and by the um, I mean the vertical forces that affect your throttling and also your your steering input. And then everyone knows that steering wheels and boats are not built for holding on to. No one would hold on so hard that they won't go because then they will go leave the boat with the steering wheel. Uh, so the driver is, I mean, the passengers are in, much, in a much better position because they can hold on. The driver has nothing to hold on to. So that's the, the forces uh, envelope of this and how that affects. Then we want to talk about sensory um, overload. 
And sensory overload is a situation that I'm sure that most of you have been um, experiencing. For example, when you're driving in, um, when you're driving fast, you're talking on the phone at the same time in some countries that's legal. Um, someone is screaming behind you and all of a sudden you miss the exit sign. That's sensory overload. Had you not been talking on your phone, you might have seen that sign. And that's extremely important in high-speed boating because you have so much sensory input. You have wind, you have spray, you have cold often, a um, lot of sound from the engines. So, I mean, all your senses are already preloaded. And then if you get a new radar system, as we talked about here before with the RNLI, you also have to focus on what did that guy tell me yesterday? Was it that button or that button? With everything else going on. And of course you can train this, but what we want to do is we want to reduce the number of levers and the number of things you have to control so that it's being done automatically. You don't have to think about, okay, that one was for throttling. Oh shit, that was the bucket. You want to know what you're doing at all times. Um, yeah, here are some um, other um, other factors that affect your um, your senses: um, gunfire and missiles and sea state, and all of that, depending on what you're what you're out for. Um, so, talking about conscious and subconscious input. The conscious input is what we are thinking we're doing. The subconscious is what we're not. So when you're riding your bike, you're consciously ringing the bell, but you're subconsciously steering and keeping keeping the balance. You're not thinking about, okay, now I probably should lean a little bit more not to fall over. That's just happening. So the more we can automate, the more we can bring down to the lower brainstem level and take off your um, mental capacity to free up the mind to interpret the new radar, to read the seas, to look at the navigation marks, the better and the safer the driver is gonna be. Okay, so people say that, but at really high speeds, it's really dangerous with steering bars. Uh, and then you show them this video. You try to show them this video. Okay. This guy can do all this, he can stay in balance, he can throttle on, he can brake in a non-stable, on a non-stable platform. So if this works here, we claim that it works on boat. No one would dream of driving this bike. But this is what's the standard. That's the standard, and the reason that's the standard is because you need you need the gears, and you need the 1,000 uh, degrees steering to move the old system, because you need that much push and pull or that much oil to go through the system. You need those big levers because you need the leverage to push those heavy wires. Not anymore. I mean, now everything is electronic. Now there's no reason to have a long lever. There's no reason to have three laps port lock to lock. Um, I'll just skip this one real quick. Um, so this is our suggestion to an improvement. This has all the things you saw on the, the six lever cockpit. You can use, you can hold on with your both hands at the same time as you can subconsciously feel the angle of the drives, because that's the same angle as you have between your hands. You can throttle on or off, you can control a bucket at the same time as you're holding on. And you will not be affected, like you saw on the motocross driver. He was affected by a lot of vertical forces, but he could still keep his line, because as long as he loads the same amount of force on both hands, the steering bar is not going to turn. So you can hold on as hard as you can, sideways, backwards, up and down, as long as you have balance. Um, we're still working a bit, little bit about the ergonomics with the uh, shift buttons and, and uh, some of that, so we're happy for your input of what you think feels natural. Um, the new system we've built now, the reason we can stand here now and talk about it is that now it's really, really good. 
It's a fully fly-by-wire, fully electronic system built for the Volvo Penta system. It's on uh, one of the North Safe boats down here. And we can tweak the angles, we can tweak the sensitivity, we can tweak the force feedback. Now we are now it's good enough, so we're proud enough to show it to you. So please try that boat, try the system, come find us, give us your honest input. Um, there's still one or two versions before it's a consumer product, but um, we're proud enough to show it. Thank you.